I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the Computer Curmudgy, and Netcast. And I'm glad you could join us once again this week. Once again, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the Computer Curmudgy. And I'm glad you joined us. We've got good techie things to talk about, as usual. And, you know, we always do that. Every week we come in and we talk tech. That's just what we do. You're here in my office, virtually speaking, and we're looking into the news of the past week in the tech world. Well, the stuff that I found interesting. Some things happened that I didn't care. (laughs) So you'll have to find those out for yourself because if I don't care, I don't talk about it. It's just one of those things. All right, let's talk about the first item we have here. Uh, And this is one you probably won't care about. You know, I mean, it's not exactly an exciting item. Eh. But if you're a developer, maybe you, you know, you will like it. I know at least one developer out there that listens and watches regularly. Hi, Mike. And uh, you may care. I don't know. Anyway, an open source developer's view of the M language. M. Not C. (laughs) No. That's too low down the alphabet. This is M. (laughs) Anyway, M stands for mumps. (laughs) Yeah, I know. M-U-M-P-S, mumps. Okay, the mumps language. Now, mumps is an old language. It stands for Massachusetts General Hospital Utility. Multi-programming language. I left the last part out. Anyway, it was apparently written to be a language for hospitals to do, you know, tech stuff. So anyway, this guy is writing this article, and he's talking about the fact that it is a multi-user, strongly imperative language designed to manipulate and control massive databases. So it's basically kind of like a database scripting language. Uh, It's used in high availability, high reliability niche computer markets which include banking and hospitals. It provides simple data data abstractions in which all data values are strings of characters and all data can be structured as multiple dimensional arrays. Kind of enough to make you kind of fade out. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Anyway, but I thought it was interesting because it's open source and it's interesting. (laughs) Some of you are going, oh, yeah, Doc, it's real interesting. Sure, you go with that. No, anyway, here's something you'll find more interesting, I trust, and that's Mosey Pro. Mosey Pro for business. Yes. Now, as I've said before, it's for business. That's what they designed it for because they want it to be bulletproof and industrial strength, but you can use it at home. And you need to. If you don't have a product like this that will back up all your files without you having to think about it, trust me, you're not going to remember. You're going to forget. And you're not going to back up stuff. And stuff needs to be backed up. I'm telling you. All your files, your videos, your stuff like that. You know what? Do I have... I'm wondering if I've got a light problem. No, maybe not caught my attention. I'm seeing right there a little glowy thing. So it's some kind of reflection. But you know, I just got distracted by it. (laughs) Squirrel! (laughs) Okay, never mind. (laughs) Mosey Pro for for business is what I was talking about. I got distracted, but I left the thing up here so you can still use the URL. It's a special URL you can go to, mosey.com slash pro, and enter the code word. Ready? You see it on the screen. Podcast 15 for 15% off 
Mosey Pro. Now this is professional business quality software and you get 15% off. Awesome deal. So take advantage of it today. I'm telling you. Okay, next item. You may, okay, this needs some explanation. <laughs> I'm gonna digress on an explanation as I do sometimes, okay? All right, here's the deal. <sighs> Twit is the network, that's This Week in Tech, uh, is the network that Leo Laporte created, along with many of his friends, to broadcast This Week in Tech, tech news, kind of like this show, except a whole lot more people and a whole lot more money behind it. Yes. Okay, anyway, so Mediafly is a company that provided Twit a Roku utility, if you will, basically a software that allowed Twit to be on the Roku box. Well, all of a sudden, Mediafly said, dude, why are we doing this for free? You know, we're in business. So they yanked it. They gave Leo some you know, uh, ooh, itches. <laughs> they gave Leo some warning, but basically they yanked the app. So Leo had to go out and have an app developed for Twit. Well, it's a, it's a new app, so you have to install it on your Roku box. So I have the information of how to sign up for the Twit network, the Twit channel for your Roku box. You can go to HTTPS, whack, whack owner, you like the wax, dot roku.com. I'll put it here on the screen, okay? Then when you log into your Roku account, you enter the keyword twit beta one. I'll put that up on the screen right here, okay? Twit beta one. Now, when you do that and then you go to your Roku box, ta -ta, you will have twit. Yes, the new twit, which I must admit, I kind of like better than, it's now. it's not that their programming has changed, it's just the, the software that you use to access their network on the Roku box has changed. If you get it through RSS subscription or iTunes or going to their website or whatever, eh, nothing has changed, okay? But for the Roku, this is a change. So be aware, I'm telling you. Okay, you don't want to miss your twit. And aren't we all? Yes. All right. Amazon, next item by the way. Amazon may be planning a nine inch Kindle Fire. Now this is my G tablet with the Dr. Bill side up there. And this is a 10.1 inch dual processor tablet, okay? Now my Kindle is smaller, it's a seven inch Still dual processor, but seven inch. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Android, <laughs> I don't know why, it just left my mind. Android operating system tablet, this is also Android. Anyway, the point is that Amazon may be planning a nine inch version of their Kindle. So, will they call it the Kindle Fire nine inch version? Or is this, this article says, will they, will, they, will they call it the Kindle Conflagration? I don't know. That's kind of odd when you think about it. Interesting, but odd. <laughs> Same can be said of the netcast. Interesting, but odd. Okay, I digress. Also, another great sponsor we have is GoToMeeting. For, with HD faces, go to meeting. Dude, I'll put the thing up here so you can see it. You go to the go to meeting website. And actually, hold on. Eh. What you want to do is you want to go to this URL right here special bit.ly URL. Okay, right there. Go to that, or you can go to the show notes for this netcast and click on it there, that will assure you, 100% assure you, that you will get a 30-day free trial of GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Now you have to have an HD 16 by 9 
webcam like the uh, Logitech uh, C910, for instance, which is what I have over on my PC, which is what I'm pointing to over there that you can't see. So, anyway, um, so that would give you HD capability to do your meetings via the webcam across the internet anywhere in the entire world. It's getting to be a smaller planet. Yes. And I was just having a conversation this morning with my wife Belinda who and we were talking about the fact that it's just not a lot of fun to fly anymore. You know, I used to like to fly, but it's gotten to where it's too much of a hassle. I mean, the airport and and the TSA patting you places you don't want to be patted. Know what I'm saying? And all kinds of stuff. It's just no fun. So these days it's kind of better just to sit in your own office and go with go to meeting. And it's cheap now because you can get 30 days free. I mean that's like a twelfth of a whole year for free. <laughs> yeah, I did the math right in my head. Okay. Anyway, next item. Yes, Virginia, there will be a start button in Windows 8. What? Well, here's the thing. Earlier in the week this week, there was some hoo-ha. I like that term. I don't know what it means, but I like it. Some hoo-ha over the fact that Windows 8 probably wouldn't have a start button. Or, as some people call it, a start orb. Orb. I mean, I guess it's an orb. This is a picture of the start orb. Do you see it there? Yes. You know what it is. Anyway, Windows 8 probably won't have one. Which is weird. I mean, Windows 8 is going to be strange anyway with all the tiley stuff. And I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. what. Who knows what it'll really be when it finally comes out. But, Paul Therott, who by the way is on the Twit Network with Windows Weekly. Okay, he and Leo get together and do Windows Weekly. <laughs> I don't want to say that too fast. Um, so, he writes a website called the Windows, what is it? The Win Super Site, Win Super Site, yes. And um, this is, in fact, the Win Super Site. And I'm going to go back with the back button to my article. Uh, so here's the thing he says this there's been a lot of silliness and angst about Windows 8 supposedly dropping the start button. The first time this central user interface has been absent for Windows since its debut in 1995. Dude, long time. There's just one problem. The start button isn't going anywhere. So all the hoo-ha was for nothing. In fact, it's being made more prominent than ever in Windows 8. To understand what I mean by this, consider the recent news that the start button, more correctly called the start orb, <laughs> but whatever, has been removed from consumer preview era builds of Windows 8. I corroborated this rumor in my own post logically titled Start Orb Removed in Windows 8 Consumer Preview. Yes. While it's technically true that a start button or orb which used to adorn the left end of the taskbar on the Windows desktop is missing in action, most people are missing two salient points. First, the Windows desktop is not the primary user interface in Windows 8 anymore. It's the start screen. That's the tiley stuff. Uh, which I might not like. I don't know. I personally don't think I'm going to like it, but we'll see. Um, second, the start button isn't gone. It's not going away at all. In fact, it will be present on every single Windows 8 device sold going forward. But here's the thing. It's going to be a physical button. Now, I want you to do something. Go look at your PC keyboard. You will find a Windows Orb button, sometimes called the Windows key, if you have a modern keyboard. Now, if you have a really, 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 really old keyboard like my wife Belinda does, I mean, her keycaps, you can't read the letters on them. She's rubbed them off from typing so much 
on this keyboard and it's an old keyboard it probably doesn't have a Windows key I mean if it's really really old it won't have one but if it's a fairly new keyboard like this keyboard that I have right over here which by the way about dropped it <laughs> which by the way is a Keytronic keyboard see this button right here that's the Windows button it's got the start orb on it so it's a physical button now it's just that nobody uses it because they don't care <laughs> But anyway, it's there. And it's also on other Windowsy devices, like Windows-based tablets will have a start button right there on the tablet. If, if I was using one and it wasn't an Android tablet, it, I would be pressing the start button right now, but it's not there on this tablet. <laughs> it's an Android. Anyway, or you can, even now, you can use the control escape keyboard combination. See my son, the Game Master, loves keyboard combos he's really into it he's shown me some i didn't know about and the control escape is a way to do the start orb stuff so there you go you're not losing your orb <laughs> some people might say dr bill you've lost your orb a long time ago <laughs> no i have orbs all over the place because <laughs> i've got lots of keyboards and things Anyway, <sighs> all right, this, whoa, it's the drum roll, but this week, I'm sneaky, this drum roll isn't really for a Geek Software of the Week, ha <laughs> I tricked it, dude, it's really for the Geek Website of the Week, <laughs> you didn't know there was a Geek Website of the Week, well, it comes out every few months. <laughs> Then why don't you call it the Geek Website of the Month? Because that's just not the way it works. <laughs> I have Geek Software of the Week, which is usually every week. And I have Geek Software of the Week for Linux, which is every so often. And then I have the Geek Website of the Week, which comes out whenever I just jolly well want it to. <laughs> so there you go. I don't know why that struck me so funny, but it did. Anyway, the Geek Website of the Week this week... <laughs> this month whatever is free video coding this has a long explanation with it which i'm not sure i'll even get into the whole explanation but the bottom line is if you want to embed a video in your web page this website will program it for you in other words you just enter certain key things that it asks for hit a button and it generates the html code that you can use to put in your website and i needed this because I needed to. Boy, I worked on this a long time, dude. I'm saying, man, I spent way too much time on this, but you know, I just kept wanting to tweak, tweak it, make it just so. Anyway, I wanted to have a little pop-up window come up when somebody clicked on the streaming M4V button. I wanted them to click it and have it pop up in a window and start playing the video. And I wanted to do that for WebM as well. Now, you say, Dr. Bill, why? Because you already have all of that on your website and you don't have pop-up windows and you haven't used them in the past. Why do you care now? Okay, here's the thing. I'm going to get into a really brief explanation. It's highly technical. And if your mind boggles, just hang in there. Okay, here's why. Because I have switched my video storage to Amazon's S3 cloud-based storage and then I have applied Amazon's CloudFront system to the video files so that they are streamed across across <laughs> that's a very southern way of saying it across the interwebs yes <laughs> so now here's the problem if the file resided on my web server which has PHP on it, and I defined a MIME type in Apache. Actually, it has nothing to do with PHP. Never mind that I said it PHP. Anyway, the point is, it's a MIME type in Apache. If I define that as a video file in the HT access file for that directory, then when you clicked on the file link, it would stream it 
progressively download the stream to your computer. And that worked fine. But when you put the files on S3, Amazon's S3 cloud system, and you use CloudFront, eh, you don't have that capability. You can't define the mime type. Maybe you can, I haven't found it yet, sorry. But basically, it's just a place, it's a place to put your files. Know what I'm saying? You don't have the intelligence built in to do things with it. Now there's cool stuff you can do with CrowdFront. Like for instance, it will actually do real live streaming, bit streaming. And I've chosen not to do that quite yet. I may experiment with that later. But right now, I just want it to progressively download like I'm used to. So, oh boy. I said it was going to be technical. But not having the ability to set that mind type, or at least not knowing how, it didn't download properly. It actually downloaded like it was going to download a file, which if you've got a, you know, 200 meg file, it'll take a while before it starts playing. You want it to play instantly. Just be there. And so it wasn't. And so I was frustrated. So I found a way to do it by doing this special programming. Basically use JavaScript to supply uh, the M4V file with the QuickTime plugin so that QuickTime would progressively stream it. And then on WebM, use the HTML5 uh, meta tag tagging system, programming system to allow that to work. Okay? But in order to do that, I wanted to be able to put the pop-up window. So that's why I ended up with this software from the free videocoding.com website. Now, wasn't that a lot just to explain that one little thing? Yes. But again, as I said last time, this is a techie netcast. If you're looking for cooking with Susan, I made that up totally off the top of my head, go find that netcast. But <laughs> this netcast is all about the tech. Yes. So, now you know. So remember, <laughs> until next time, that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.